in hopes to provide future visitors with a slice of the American dream, entrepreneur and cartoonist Isaac Indigo would open his aptly named Indigo Park at an unknown location somewhere in the United States, most likely in the 1950s. The park would be a self-proclaimed newfound paradise, as well as a home for his character creations, most notably Rambly the Raccoon. And while there is no official confirmation of when the park opened at the time of this video being made, there is some evidence to support that the park may have opened as early as the 1920s. Indigo Park would open its doors to critical acclaim and adoration from fans around the world. Indigo Park would become a household name worldwide and dominate markets with its merchandise, toys, and even televised cartoons. But what had started as a dream would turn to nightmare and ruin in time. As reported in the City Times newspaper on October 22nd, 2015, Indigo Park would be suddenly evacuated and closed, presumably the day prior, on October 21st, 2015. Just as fast as it had taken over, the legacy of Indigo Park would tragically come to its end, and the park would close its doors one final time time. Which brings us to current day and the events of Indigo Park Chapter 1. Of course, the story begins with our protagonist, simply named Ed, an urban explorer who is presumed to be in their 20s. Like many, Ed frequented Indigo Park as a child and would eventually take a sudden interest in going back to the seemingly abandoned theme park to film for their urban X social media. Ed would try to enlist the help of their friend Laura in exploring the park, but would be rejected and ultimately wind up going alone. Sometime around the night of October 19th, 2023, and without any of his equipment, Ed would hop a fence and find his way into the ruins of Indigo Park and the horrors that lurked within. While trying to find a way inside, Ed would meet Rambly the Raccoon, the charismatic and lovable frontman AI of Indigo Park. Excited to see a new guest for the first time in 2,920 days, Rambly helps Ed into the park, eager to show all that there is to see. However, a lot has changed in the eight years since the park's closing, much more than even Rambly knew, or so he claims, having been stuck at the park's entrance since its shutdown. Now, before we continue, I do want to take a moment to talk about the characters of Indigo Park for those who haven't played Chapter 1, and perhaps provide a refresher for those of you who have. As we know, our beloved raccoon friend Ramley would guide us to his ride, Ramley's Railway, and introduce us to his friends Molly McCaw, Finley the Sea Serpent, and Lloyd the Lion. However, Ramley would not introduce us to a fifth character. Salem the Skunk, who we will talk more about shortly. Now, not much is known currently about at least a few of these characters. However, we can dive a bit deeper and post some theories about them. First, let's talk about our oceanic friend, Finley. What we do know is that he is one of Rambly's close friends and apparently has known Rambly for over a hundred years. Remember when I said Indigo Park could have possibly opened sometime in the 1920s? Well, this is why. Why the long face and body? You've known me for 100 years, Rambly. I'm always long because I'm always longing for a new seashell for my collection. Now, while Finley does say that he's known Rambly for over 100 years, it's entirely possible that this detail is based on the character's canon relationships in the world of Indigo Park rather than actual real world timelines. And while I do believe that Indigo Park most likely opened in the 1950s, I felt it was important to include this detail in this video, because if it is confirmed that this is true, that would mean that Indigo Park opened sometime in the 1920s. That being said, this is sadly all we do learn about Finley in Chapter 1. But I am very excited to see more of him in Chapter 2 when we finally get to explore the ruins of Oceanic Odyssey. Let's move on to another character, somebody that we know a little bit more about given the events of Indigo Park Chapter 1, Molly McCaw. Molly is Rambly's best friend, or at least Rambly says she is, and the main antagonist of Chapter 1. As her name implies, she's a blue macaw and self-proclaimed pilot, although I highly doubt she has any actual pilot training. I mean, building and crashing multiple planes each week? Come on. Anyways, Molly is a pilot who builds her own planes and then crashes them. Rambly tells us that Molly and him have always been best friends, and she was likely one of the first characters created by Isaac Indigo. But don't let her lighthearted and comical demeanor fool you, for something sinister lurks beneath. Throughout Chapter 1, Molly will stalk our character, Ed, through the park before making her presence fully known in the climatic chase scene. Now, not many people might know this, but Molly's first appearance is not actually in Rambly's Railway, but rather the park entrance, right after Rambly directs you to the gift shop to retrieve your critter cuff. 
Oh, silly Rambly. Every guest needs a critter cuff. That will allow you access to reserve areas, charge payments to your room, and wear a critter cuff. I think there's some in the gift shop. Head in there and I'll get you set up. Did you catch that? If you listen closely, you can actually hear Molly somewhere in the distance mimic Rambly saying, set up. Listen one more time. Head in there and I'll get you set up. Molly would slowly build confidence in following us and make herself more and more visible each subsequent appearance after. She would be briefly visible in the hallway leading to Rambly's railway and twice during the actual train ride sequence. Once in Molly's section peeking at us through a side door in Lloyd's section right behind the player while Lloyd introduces himself. Now, normally both of Molly's appearances during the train sequence would go unnoticed for first time players and Molly would first quote appear to most players after the train ride as a blur on the monitors behind the gift shop counter. We would see Molly's whole face when leaving the backstage of Lloyd's theater. And of course she will quite obviously run by the player in the landing pad and pop up a couple more times in the landing pad tunnels. This would be the last time Molly would flee from us before the big chase sequence, which would ultimately end with Molly's demise. Not much is known about Molly's actual motivations and why she has fallen into such a horrific state, but I think there are much darker forces at play that may have guided Molly to become such a monster, but we'll circle back to that in a moment. Now on to Lloyd the Lion. Lloyd is the final of the main cast to be introduced in Rambly's Railway and is slighted by Rambly at every mention of his name. It's more than apparent that there is a poor history between Lloyd and Rambly, but what exactly is unfurled between the two can only be left to speculation. In the present, Lloyd has fallen to a very similar state as Molly. He is monstrous and seemingly feral. He resides alone, locked in his theater for what can only be assumed to be quite a number of years after the park's closure. And during our first encounter with him, Lloyd seems quite distant, as if actually afraid of us. However, he does warm up to our presence and attacks us in the backstage warehouse and again as we try to exit backstage. Both attempts fail, however, with the latter attack having been stopped by a coincidental high-pitched frequency emitted by the player's critter cuff. Lloyd would fall over in discomfort before fleeing back into the depths of the backstage, and that would be the last we would see of Lloyd. Okay, okay. So we talked about the main cast of chapter one, but there is one more mascot that we have yet to talk about and one that almost seems erased from Indigo Park entirely. Let's talk about Salem the Skunk. Salem is actually the canonical villain in the Indigo Park world and the only character that is completely ignored in the character introductions on Rambly's Railway. The train will stall when arriving at their stop and Rambly will begin to glitch out, forcing the player to hop off the ride to fix it. Salem's stop on the ride is also completely destroyed. The ceiling caved in and they're cut out broken in two. After fixing the train, the ride continues without Rambly acknowledging that anything had even happened. And the only other mention of Salem would be in an arcade machine found in Jetstream Junction. The arcade minigame revolves around Rambly searching for Molly after she crashed her plane in Rambleberry Woods. Upon finding Molly, Salem appears and says that it was actually them who had intentionally caused Molly to crash by use of a smokescreen. Salem then goes on to say that they wanted to try a new potion of theirs on Molly instead of the local wild squirrels. Molly has turned completely purple with yellow eyes and Salem claims Molly has none of that friendship garbage to stop her from tearing Rambly to pieces. Salem then disappears, leaving Rambly to fight the new evil Molly and is not seen again. Rambly, of course, would defeat evil Molly and the arcade machine would glitch out, forcing us to exit the game. So now you all should be familiar with the characters of Indigo Park, if you weren't already. Rambly the Raccoon is our best friend and helper, Salem's the main villain, and made all the other mascots evil with their potions, right? Well, not exactly. You see, there's a lot of information that's actually omitted from chapter one, but if you test your sleuthing skills, as Rambly would say, we can actually make some pretty sound assumptions and draw up some pretty interesting theories around the lore of Indigo Park. So now, let's talk about some things we can infer about the park, as well as some possible theories as to why certain things are happening and who could be the root cause of it all? First, let's talk about the mascots and the origins of their current appearances. Again, we know that Indigo Park most likely opened sometime in the 1950s. At the time of its opening, the mascots were originally portrayed by actors in costume. This is confirmed by one of the collectible items in the game, and the attached audio recording to the Rambly Head collectible implies the original mascot actors were replaced by the, quote, 
new mascots, which are presumably the ones we encounter in the game. And if it wasn't blatantly obvious from Molly's death, I just want to clarify, these new mascots, they're not animatronics. I mean, come on. It seems that somehow Indigo Park came into possession of or created actual living, breathing, and bleeding animal mascots. How this was actually accomplished is unknown, but it could be speculated to be some form of genetic modification of actual animals. And this may explain why mascots like Lloyd are more feral compared to their cartoon counterparts. That being said, we've only seen Molly, Lloyd, and Finley in their mutant forms. However, it can be assumed that Rambly and Salem both have mutant forms as well. And yes, you heard that right. Rambly the raccoon, the lovable, adorable, and super sweet AI friend, most likely has a six foot mutant animal version of himself running around the park. Considering they gave both Molly and Lloyd such a upgrade, I think it would be silly to think Indigo Park didn't give their main star the mutant treatment. It is unclear, however, whether or not the AI Rambly is being controlled by said counterpart, or if they are both separate entities entirely. We will have to see in later chapters. Now, before we continue, I just wanna say now we are getting into heavy speculation territory. And while I believe that all the points that follow are possible, they are, of course, up for debate and most likely will change whenever more Indigo Park chapters are released. So strap on your tinfoil hat with me and let's dive in. So, Corgi, wouldn't it make sense for Salem, the canonical Indigoverse villain, to make the mascots evil, though? Well, no, not necessarily. At least I don't think. And here's why. Well, not much is known about Salem at the time of this video. We can infer a couple of things about them. First, let's recap what we already know about Salem the Skunk. Namely, their involvement in the Indigo Park canon. Salem is, again, the Indigo versus canonical villain and Rambly's arch nemesis, much like Lex Luthor to Superman or Joker to Batman. We know this because of the Rambly Rush arcade machine that we play in Jetstream Junction. The game obviously predates the park's closing and was likely a popular cabinet outside of the park as well given how successful and world-renowned Indigo Park was during its prime. As we already discussed, the game follows Rambly searching for Molly, who's crashed in the forest. When found, it's revealed that Molly's crash was caused by Salem, to which Rambly says, Salem, I should have known you were behind this. It is clear that Salem is the quintessential antagonist here, and even a recurring one in Indigo's history. But honestly, I think that's where their evil doings end. You see, throughout our stay in Indigo Park during Chapter 1, Salem is only ever mentioned or shown to us twice. It's as if their existence has been completely erased, or someone or something is attempted to do that at least. I mean, Rambly doesn't mention Salem or acknowledge their existence throughout the entirety of the chapter, which makes me think that Rambly is trying to hide something. This can be further supported by a secret path, actually, in the Rambly Rush arcade machine, where instead of finding Molly at the crash site, we take an alternate route down into a hidden cave. And here we find Molly, but instead of crash, they're actually trapped in a cage. We don't get much after this as the arcade machine will reset again. But how could there be two Mollies? And if the real Molly is trapped in a cage, then who did Salem turn evil? And does Rambly actually know? Is this possibly a foreshadow of what's to come in later chapters? Is the real Molly potentially still alive and trapped somewhere? Remember back to when we discussed about how Rambly has been stuck at the entrance of Indigo Park before Ed arrived? But I was confined to the entrance for so long, I didn't realize just how much disrepair the park has fallen into. How could that be? For starters, there is nothing that would be keeping Rambly from entering the park before us, given he has control over the various monitors and displays in the park. So what would be stopping him? Another convenient detail would be the destruction of Salem's stop in Rambly's railway. No, a lot of you might be thinking, well, the park's been abandoned, things collapse, and also story build up, blah, 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 blah. And see, I don't think that Rambly was confined to the entrance of Indigo Park at all, and instead contributed to the park's shutdown and the ruinous state thereafter. Well, we don't exactly know why the park was shut down, we can heavily infer that Rambly had something to do with it based on his behaviors in the time that we have known him. When we finally get Rambly's confession at the climax of the chapter, he seems completely unfazed to have just seen his best friend, Molly, decapitated. He says that he wanted us to have an enjoyable experience at the park, but was that out of his lighthearted nature or possibly a yearning to return to how things used to be before the park shut down? Let's move on to everybody's favorite, Lloyd. And no, this isn't a joke this time. Everybody's favorite, Lloyd. 
It's obvious that Rambly has a distaste for Lloyd, as he mentions it frequently throughout the chapter. In fact, it's one of the more humorous aspects of the game and has kind of become a meme in the community. But what if I told you that the negativity between the two was much more sinister than just size and eye rolling? We can assume that canonically Lloyd does not actually feel the same distaste that Rambly does for him. This can be seen on the Rambly Railway ride in that, well, the lines of the cutouts are scripted. The character of Lloyd doesn't seem to project any negativity onto Rambly. <sighs> Hater Lloyd. Do not shame me with that common folk name. I am the proud, the prestigious, the professional Lloydford L. Lyon. Oh, extraordinaire! Great act, Lloyd. He's just his usual proud and eccentric self. Now, if we look into what else the game tells us about Lloyd through his collectibles, we can actually see from the flavor text for the standard Lloyd plush. From what Ed remembers, Indigo used Lloyd a lot more. He was always one of my favorites. It seems that Lloyd as a character was perhaps growing in popularity among the Indigo guests in the more recent years. So much so that Indigo Park had decided to even give Lloyd exclusive merchandise like the retro Lloyd plush. And as expected, if we show this collectible to Rambly, it immediately sends him into a rage as he starts to scream. Now why do they only make one of Lloyd? Is it because he's the loudest? I can be loud too! Where's my limited condition throwback plush? Where's Molly's? Where's Finley's? Where's my limited edition throwback plush? Where's Molly's? Where's Finley's? And did you catch that as Rambly yells this, he begins glitching out like he did back when we got stuck at Salem Stop and Rambly's Railway? This might be a bit of a stretch, but even look at Lloyd's Theater compared to the rest of the park's architecture, specifically Rambly's Railway. Now, my tinfoil hat might be too tight on this one, but even Lloyd's Theater seems newer and more modernized than Rambly's Railway. Solid and clean concrete versus antiquated and worn bricks. Regardless, it's apparent to me that Lloyd was becoming more popular and getting special treatment, and I think Rambly was growing a bit more than jealous. Ultimately, something would happen and end up forcing the park's sudden evacuation. But what would happen in the eight years after that? Well, for starters, I think Lloyd, or rather the mutant version of Lloyd that we've encountered in Chapter 1, was forcefully locked in his theater. We can assume this because the only way into that theater required an orange level access via our critic cuff, something granted by Rambly remotely. Following this, I'm highly confident that Lloyd was actually tortured or abused by Rambly in some fashion over the course of the eight years of the park's been closed. And this is actually shown to us in a couple of different ways. Firstly, when we encounter Lloyd, you might have noticed he's covered in blood or injuries all over his body, his sides, his back, his legs, his face. Even his tail are all covered in what I believe to be his own blood. Even if we assume that Lloyd did wind up killing or harming somebody and that's what caused the park to close, we can assume that after eight years, he still wouldn't be stained with that blood. I would also like to point out that even though Lloyd does scare us on a couple of occasions, it is never actually shown that his intentions were malicious. When we first enter the stage, Lloyd's first reaction to us is to run off, seemingly afraid of us. And notice where he runs to. He runs backstage, the only area in Indigo that Rambly says he can't see. It would make sense that Lloyd would stay out of Rambly's sight if Rambly was indeed causing him harm. Furthermore, when Lloyd actually attacks us, he merely spins us around before the critter cuff somehow turns on that dog whistle that scares him away. Personally, I think that Rambly somehow activated the critter cuff remotely, causing it to emit that frequency that he knew Lloyd was afraid of, perhaps some sort of Pavlovian response. And if you still don't believe that these are wounds on Lloyd's body, well, I have evidence to back that up too. I'm sure you remember back to Salem Stop at Rambly's Railway, right? Once we enter the maintenance hallway, we're jump scared by a broken Molly animatronic or statue that repeats the following. <laughs> Did you catch that? Not Rambly, he hurts Lloyd, he hurts Lloyd. It appears that somehow, even the Molly animatronic knew about Lloyd's abuse. Could this possibly be why it was destroyed and discarded too? And it's just so convenient that it's tucked away in the destroyed remains of Salem's railway stop, right? Perhaps Salem's not as evil as we have been led to believe, and instead, maybe they're trying to prevent Rambly from doing whatever it is he's doing, and in turn, just further provoking Rambly to cause more destruction. I don't know about you, but it appears that Rambly is trying his best to remove some characters from the picture entirely. First with Salem, due to their canonical rivalry, and more recently with Lloyd, due to the outlandish jealousy. I mean, 
even look at minor details around the game like character portraits going into Rambly's Railway. We see Molly and Rambly and Finley's posters hung up on display, but Salem and Lloyd's have been thrown to the ground. Seems awfully suspicious if you ask me. Okay, Corgi, but what is Rambly trying to do that's so evil though? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't really think Rambly's overall intentions are necessarily evil. I believe that Rambly, or at least this Rambly that we meet in chapter one, is just a simple AI. He's programmed with very simple goals in mind, and the utmost important of these goals is to be the best Rambly raccoon he can be. I think as a whole, Rambly just wants things back to the way they were, before the shutdown. And even before Lloyd started stealing a bit of his thunder, Rambly wants Indigo Park back up and running again, no matter the cost. And if there's one thing that media has taught us about AIs that have had time to sit and think and rot, it's that their methods are less than logical. Their coding degrades. Their reasoning becomes little more than a need, no, an obsession, to seek their task to its end, and they fall into rampancy. And honestly, I think that's what we're dealing with here. An AI that's lost control and needs our help in getting things back to normal, whatever that may truly mean to it at this point in time. But, but, I have an idea. I have access to the repair documentation of my database. I just can't execute most tasks without authorization from a human user. You must have come here because the park matters to you too, right? Would you be willing to help me restore the park? I can see in your facial tracking data that you aren't opposed to this. Ooh, I'm so excited. Let's get this place back in business. Now, Rambly does talk about some sort of repair documentation, but he also does say that he cannot execute most tasks without authorization from a human user. And when Rambly expresses his excitement in our silent agreement to help him, he quite literally glitches out. Need I say more? And while the park could use quite a few repairs, it is odd to say the least that Rambly needs this repair documentation to do what? It's not clear what exactly he would be repairing, but whatever it is, ultimately, I don't think it can be good. In fact, I think Rambly gives us a bit of insight into his motivations and intentions in the fan favorite and super catchy Rambly review and credits song. He says a few lines that I think actually stand out. Rambly sings lines like, a lot of happy feedback ensures I get to exist, which could point to his desire to get things back up and running or face being shut down. He also says, at Indigo Park, more than my remarks are mysteries, implying that Rambly might be hiding things from us. And of course, his closing words. Till all my old friends are united again, and I won't feel so left behind. Let you go. See you next time, buddy. Please? Rambly's clearly begging for help out of the situation that he's currently in. Now, does that make you feel sorry for him or perhaps suspicious? I'll let you decide that for yourself. One last thing to note is Rambly's effectively guiding us through the game step by step. This wouldn't normally be noteworthy, but it is odd that the only time that we try to divert from his path away from the Rookie Wrangler's registered security room, he literally blocks our path. Uh-oh, that Rambly's Wrangler's room is only accessible by Royal Wranglers. Maybe one day you'll grow up big and strong enough to enter it. But for now, don't. He seems to get annoyed with us trying to go in there and says only the higher clearance staff, the Royal Wranglers registered, are allowed in there. You might say that Rambly's just trying to follow protocol, but he literally just defied protocol. He led us into a staff-only area to avoid Molly, and even gave us the Rookie Wrangler registered clearance. I think Rambly could absolutely give us clearance to go in, but he doesn't. What could he be hiding? Or better yet, why does he want us heading toward Oceanic Odyssey? Really know what Only time will tell. Well, that is all I have for you today, everybody. I do hope you enjoyed and perhaps learn something new. Again, a lot of this information is up for debate at this point, and until we get another chapter, we will of course have to wait for official confirmation on a lot of these theories from Unique Geese. But I do think that anything we talked about today could entirely be plausible for the Indigo Park canon. Before we do send off here, I did just want to say a quick thank you to everybody for watching this video. And send a big thank you, of course, to a good friend of mine and the editor of this video for helping me on this project. And of course, if you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe. It's free and it absolutely helps me out a lot. Also, feel free to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Come and even say hi over on my Twitch channel. Links down in the description. I stream over there five days a week. Thank you so much again, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.